what's happening, everybody? Uh, Juan here out in the garage. And uh, hopefully, I don't break anything <laughs> along the way. As always, something has to change when I'm doing this. <laughs> Love it when a plan comes together. All right, folks. I uh, just wanted to give you an update on the latest and greatest, where I am now. Uh, I've had version two of the electric center stand out here on the bike, on the lift uh, for several days, sitting on the legs, doing a stress test on it. Uh, in order to fit on my lift, I actually had to put the stock wheel back on because the bike was too long with the 26 on there. Um, but anyway, so I'm just going to show you where I am so far and the changes I have made and plan to make. All right. So she's been sitting in here on the, uh, move that up for a second out of the way, on the center stand out here on the lift. I've moved it around a lot. Uh, it hasn't shown any signs of failure. I'm looking to see if it's going to fail at this weld because there's just a piece of half inch um, solid uh, round stock coming off that this is attached to. Um, this brace here is to be a stop when it goes up and a stop when it comes down. So right now it's actually resting against this face. Um, and so this has not shown any signs of failure at the weld which is good considering, you know, this is one of the first structural things I've made since I started practicing welding. Um, it's actually a little tall, uh, which is fine. It's got some decent clearance right now. Uh, the bags would be about two inches off the ground and I can actually change that by uh, adjusting how I have the uh, lowering link set if I wanted to leave these here. Uh, but regardless, uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy with the way this outside the frame rail setup that I did came out. Um, I could literally make this a manual stand right now. I could take a piece of round stock, the same stuff that's in there and put a uh, foot uh, a kick lever out here and put a tab on that leg and on the frame on the other side with a spring to make that retract. And this could be manual in, I don't know, an hour because I'd have to do the feet too. But I want it to be power, so I am not going to do that. Now, that's version two of the electric stand. Here is version three. So what I did is the same setup with the legs and how they would go on to those uh, tabs coming off the side of the uh, frame mounts. But instead of using tube to go across, I used flat bar. And by doing this, if you guys remember, um, because the tube is going across there, when you retract it, it can only come up so far because the tube is going to hit the frame. So what I've done here, stick this as if it's mounted. So it would mount the same way. And you notice this doesn't come all the way to the bottom of the rail. It's right around the middle of the uh, frame rail. But when it retracts, it will be much closer to flush with the frame rail because now instead of having the diameter of the bar hitting this and sitting below this will sit almost almost flush which is pretty good pretty good so i'm probably going to leave this on here tonight um it's like almost eight o'clock or something like that so I'm not going to I'm not going to mess around with trying to take the other one off tonight, but I'm going to put that one on tomorrow. Also, I've gotten a couple of other actuators uh, to try. So I had that linear actuator on there the other day um, and I got one with a different length stroke just to kind of check and see. But now I've also got this one. This one is a rotary actuator, so it actually turns. It has got a metal arm that comes. Come on, focus a metal arm that comes off of this. So I'm going to see if I can mount this here, have the arm come off, attach 
to a tab or something on here so that when this rotates this way, it then pulls the stand up with it. Um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it works out. I've still got several actuators over there. Um, this one is 20 kilograms. So this thing's got a ton of power for what it needs to do, uh, considering it's only moving the stand and not lifting the bike. Um, I've got little heim joints, uh, and threaded rod in case I want to, uh, try to move the, um, the actuator somewhere else and I need a linkage for it. Um, I got this rotary one too, which is super powerful, but it wasn't until I tried to reverse direction and it threw a spark that I realized it's only a single direction. So that one's not going to go. Uh, I'll use that for something else. I'm sure I can find another, uh, project on the bike to use that, but I have no shortage of actuators. I mean, this box here and this box here are just full of actuators of different sizes, different bores, different strokes, some of them electric, some of them pneumatic, um, because I've got all these ideas of things I want to do. I wanted to put the uh, bag lids on, uh, on actuators and I might still, but right now that's, uh, that's kind of off the table. But anyway, so I'll get back out here tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday and uh, wifey's working. So, you know, take care of the dog in the morning and then try to get out here uh, as soon as I can and take the other one off the bike, put this one on and give it a shot. I think what I might also do, uh, the, the way these are going on right now, I put one side on and then pull. There's just enough flex for me to get it to, um, for that frame rail excuse me, for the uh, frame mount to pop up on the outside of the frame rail. What I may do with this one, I don't know, it just depends on the difficulty. I might actually cut it here and put, um, I don't know, uh, some kind of tab here so we can mount it on one side, put this one on, they slide together and then lock into place just for ease of mounting. It may not make a difference. Um, I might still be able to pop this one on the same way I popped the other one on. And if that's the case, it can either stay clamped or my idea is to actually weld the, um, the center stand uh, frame mounts to the frame rail, but just depends on how permanent I want to make it. I know that I have that option, uh, but the clamps seem to be holding it really well that are on there now. Anyway, that is the latest and the greatest from, uh, from the Sinister Racing Garage. Uh, I will catch you guys tomorrow sometime. All right. Have a great night. Well, you don't know what night it is, so I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye. All right. So this is the third iteration of this style of this uh, center stand. As you can see with this one, I am almost virtually flush with the bottom of the frame. There will be feet here, so it'll stick down just a little bit, but you can see here it doesn't even stick down farther than the uh, lowest part of the swing arm here. Um, and of course, this is with the bike lowered all the way down. Um, it is sitting on a block here just so I can access this, but you can see um, this is actually probably even slightly lower than the bike will be when it's sitting on the center stand. This tab here is just because of the, the um, sheet that I have coming across or the bar stock that I have coming across. Um, I was going to wrap this around and weld it or possibly cut it off and just weld the tip here, but I'm not going to cut it off just yet because I might see if I can use this as a, um, as a tab for my actuator. It's kind of low, so I, I don't think I will. I think I'm going to put something up here or directly on the hinge because that will require less movement uh, and less length of anything for the, uh, the actuator. But uh, I'm going to pull this thing off here in a second uh, so you can see it. Uh, but as you can see, I used um, flat bar. Uh, this is uh, one inch, I believe. I did it nice and low so that when it's retracted all the way up, like I said, it sits virtually flush with the bottom of the frame, which is more of what I was looking for. Using that, um, using the pipe or the tube there, it sat down a little farther than I wanted, um, and this will be much better. Look at that, it doesn't even stick down farther than the uh, the overflow hose there. Very cool. Uh, so again, this is my design that I'm working with. I will not be using this type of band clamp. I'm gonna use an exhaust clamp on there because I'm still trying to determine whether I'm gonna weld this on. My thought was to weld this part onto the frame, um, but I might just go ahead, come on, focus. 
I might just go ahead and leave it clamped on for ease. Um, and if I need to remove it, it'll just be easier to do that way. I actually had some scrap right. metal laying around. These actually were part of the original mounting bracket for that first set of donor manual center stands I had uh, before I did that one. That was like part of the, uh, the mounting bracket that wouldn't work because it was too narrow. So I actually cut the uh, mounting tab off of here where it went over the top of something. So there's metal over on this side, in between, and over here. And I'm actually going to use these for the feet for my center stand because it'll give me some width. It's big enough for me to weld to. And then this will be a bit of a toe. So then when the uh, center stand drops down to flat, it has, ugh, it has that in front, kind of a, a little kick. I, most of the ones I've seen have had something there, not just flat. This one has a full 90 degree bend. Most of the ones I see have like a 30 degree, but uh, I think this will be fine. I mean, I could always go and make some more, but hell, if I've already got something that'll work, I figured I'd try it. All right, so I've uh, just put my feet on the center stand and um, I think when I mounted it, I slid this a little farther back. So I need to slide that forward, uh, partly because I've got the feet on, but also because it's sitting on top of this plate here. Uh, it's got the bike sitting a lot higher uh, and you know, even way higher than this block, which was all the way touching the frame with the side stand or with the center stand on earlier, but that's all right. Um, also, uh, I welded on a flat, it's actually a washer that I welded here to give me a, a flat face here to keep this thing from rotating forward. I want it to be at the angle that the frame is going, which is about uh, seven degrees or six degrees. So this will actually have just a slightly forward slope when it's all the way down. Again, it's not doing it now because it's sitting on the edge of this plate, both sides are. Um, and so it's just sitting a little straighter up and down. And um, I'm trying to determine, I guess once I get it off of this plate and see how low it actually is, I may move this forward a little bit so it drops ever so slightly lower. Uh, it's not completely bottomed out with the air right now. I mean, the air is out, but, you know, the center stand is keeping it from going any lower. I think it goes like another quarter inch or so down. Um, but, you know, I still have to make sure that the bags aren't dragging when uh, when it's aired all the way down. So. If I have to work with this, that's fine. It's still only a total of about three and a half inches off the ground at the uh, at the center stand. And obviously back here at the bottom of the swing arm, it's even lower. Uh, and the welds are ugly. I know I'm just learning how to weld. And so that's new. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit. And ultimately that's going to be powder coated. And again, I'm still determining whether I'm going to weld this to the bike or not. Um, if I, I'll probably keep it just clamped on. And like I said, I'm going to get rid of these and get uh, exhaust clamps to put on here. Uh, I'll roll with it and see how I like it. See if the look of it stays with me just being clamped on. Uh, I guess if I put an exhaust clamp on the back side, you really won't see it. Um, as long as everything is, uh, the same color. Uh, but there, there she is. So as far as construction, uh, like I said, I got to clean it up and, uh, get it to be black. Um, but this is the final iteration of this that I'm going with. And now I just have to work on getting my, uh, actuator of see which actuator I'm going to use to, to drive this sucker down. Uh, but that's where we stand now. Just got to keep it pushing and get to the, uh, fun part of getting it to yeah, move. Using on, so. this type of exhaust clamp is, uh, far more attractive than using a, uh, standard band clamp. Uh, that's what it looks like with the exhaust clamp on there and I'll probably still powder coat that black just so it looks that much better. Uh, but yeah, far better with, uh, with that style versus that style. But this was just for fitment anyway, was never going to keep that on. Ah, fabrication, always fun. All right. I've decided what I'm going to do for these brake levers. I actually took a stock brake lever from this bike, Roadstar, and then one from a uh, Royal Star I think I had. I uh, Actually, this is the Royal Star uh, foot pedal because it's bigger than the Roadstar one. I cut the pieces off the back and uh, welded it straight to the arm. And I'm creating a second one down below 
what I'm doing here is just lining it up how I want it to be and making sure that it'll actually clear the, uh, the foot, uh, floorboard. I'm going to shape this a little bit better, round this out, smooth it. And I think what I'm going to do is this piece behind here, uh, I'm going to cut the face of this so that they are actually flush across the face, but it'll be two different pedals. And then when I want to use both, I just press in the middle and have both pedals. When I want to use the rear only, my foot just goes a little bit and my toes catch this part of the, the brake pedal here to use just the rear. Uh, so I'm just trying to get everything lined up right now. But that's what it's looking like. All right, so uh, I've got a lot more of it done now. Um, this is kind of going to be close to the final iteration. So this will be the front brake. This is the rear brake. When I want both brakes, push them both at the same time. When I want just the rear brake, I'll push this one by itself. Obviously, I shouldn't have to go that far. And then I'll just kind of move my toe to the outside. That's why I have this piece here. I think I'm gonna reshape this a little bit. I need to trim this down a little bit because it's a little too close to the footboard. It doesn't hit, but it's awfully close. So I might trim it just a little bit because there's always gonna be a little bit of flex in this arm. Uh, there's more now than there probably needs to be because I haven't put a spring return on it yet, nor have I put a uh, catch on the bottom so that it only comes up and stops right there. So uh, there's still some more work to do on it, but uh, now I've got the pedals uh, done. And, you know, these will be, I, th I think I'm going to powder coat them or maybe even anodize them, not really sure. Uh, so they will look a little cleaner. Um, and then... I just got to get my uh, my two separate master cylinders on there. I can possibly use my stock one for the front, except that I don't have clearance here. So I definitely have to cut this piece off, relocate it backward. Uh, but then it's going to be a question of um, how tight this is going to be to the end of the master cylinder. I've got a couple of aftermarket ones, and then I've got... A couple of different ones here. One's the Roadstar one. One's a uh, Road Liner, or a, I don't know, one of the other Road, uh, one of the other Star bikes. Um, so I can kind of play with those. Uh, but then for the rear, I'm gonna have to do a remote reservoir, which I'll probably put back here somewhere underneath. Um, not really sure yet. And once I figure that out, I'll determine where I have to put the actuator. So for the the front one. The actuator is going to be here. It's already attached to the lever. For the rear, I'm going to have to put it somewhere else. Uh, it'll probably be cable operated, so I'll have to put a cable somewhere. We'll figure out how it's going to work, but I think that's how I'm going to have my pedal set up. And it'll look better once it's whatever finish I'll put on it. All right, well, Go. among other things that I'm working on, everything's, uh, there's just always something going on. Uh, I'm gonna make a change, another change. Uh, so here's my fast up tank. You know, before I made my uh, tanks out of two nine ounce paintball bottles, then I got a couple of 20 ounce paintball bottles. Uh, and then I found this one, I think it's uh, one gallon. And um, I've got a pressure switch on here, a 120 to 150 pressure switch. And then I've got my 24 inch uh, stainless lead line on there. Uh, this, you know, is designed for a Harley, so it mounts to a bottom rail, uh, which we don't have. So what I'm gonna do is I've got the D-chopper brackets, and what I've done is cut myself a piece of uh, one and a half uh, by one eighth uh, flat bar, flat stock, and I'm going to weld it here. And then I'm going to drill it, tap it, well, just drill it. And then I'm going to mount the tank underneath the bar here. So, ah, just marked it for the uh, the holes to to drill, mounting holes. And then I've got the metal all cleaned up down to uh, to bare metal. And uh, then I'll go ahead and weld that up and uh, mount the tank underneath there. All right, got the uh, holes drilled and the bolts that are going to go through. And I tell you what, I can look at that right now. And no matter how much I measure and center punch the holes, I never get these damn things even. This one is just slightly lower, if you will, than this one. If they're up and down, this one is slightly more to the right than this one. It's a, it's a very small difference, but I can see it. And it's not going to make a difference with the tank underneath. It's going to be so minute from one end to the other. 
But anyway, I'll go ahead and test fit that now and uh, then disconnect right, the battery and weld it up. I'm going to go ahead and uh, dry fit it up there because uh, I'll still have to go back through and get this all pretty in black again. I don't think I'll powder coat it. Uh, I'll probably just paint it. It won't be really exposed anyway. So, But we'll see. Actually, this front edge might be slightly exposed under the front of the bag, so I might have to clean that right, up a so bit more. I got it welded up, uh, temporarily mounted up. I haven't put Loctite or anything in there yet. Uh, I kind of like the tank under there. It's, uh, it's nice and neat, tucked away. Um, and now I don't have to put it in my bag. I have false bottoms in my bag, and so it was going to be hidden anyway. But this one doesn't fit in the bag the same way the two 9-ounce bottles did. Um, and I don't know if you remember, I actually had my compressor mounted underneath here before. These are actually the four mounting bolts for the compressor. It was under there, so now I'm going to move it. I think what I may do is temporarily put it up there uh, on the, the rail that goes across for the swing arm until I decide if I'm going to do the airbag for the swing arm. Uh, I know some people put it there. A lot of people put it up here behind the battery. I've got my relays for my air ride down there. Um, and I don't know, I could possibly move those, but I keep making changes. You just never know where I'm going to be week after week. <laughs> anyway, but uh, that's dry fit under there. I like that. It's nice and neat, tucked away, unobtrusive. Uh, so nice.